Hello everyone. Today we are here to present our ME 160 project of a telescoping bike. We are team three consisting of Ryan Bingham, Joel Fajardo, Peter Hackle, Carlos Malara, Kevin Perez Rios, Jeremiah Stakes, Isaiah Trujillo, and myself, Max DeFoya. Our team has decided to focus on something that is rising on demand, something that can be easily accessible to anyone of any age. Bicycles are a great mode of transportation. Not only are they fairly easy to ride, but they are able to get you anywhere in a relatively fast manner. They help increase your cardiovascular and muscular fitness, improve the strength of your bones and help improve your posture. When brainstorming of ways to innovate the popular mode of transportation, we visited the already popular revolutionary technologies that have been added to the bicycle. The first one we discussed was the folding bike. With an ever increasing demand for bicycles, especially in the current situation of the COVID-19 pandemic, public transportation has become a hazard. With fear of getting infected with this highly contagious virus, people are finding safer ways to efficiently travel. Being stuck at home can also cause people to feel less motivated to exercise. The closure of gyms and fitness centers, along with sports being on hold, people are having to find creative ways to stay healthy at home. Whether it's going for a walk or run with, the, with your family around the neighborhood, or for instance, picking up a new hobby like bike riding. As Robert Annis from bicycling.com states, people were and still are looking for alternate ways for transportation, as well as find new ways to get outside and get exercise with gyms either still closed down or open at partial capacity across the country. And the interest has yet to, yet to abate. This leads me to discuss the benefits of the folding bike innovation. First and foremost, folding bikes are compact. The folding bikes are convenient, especially if you live in a, in a really crowded place like London, New York, Tokyo, and take other forms of transportation like the subway or a bus. In some cases, bikes become so small, you, you can even fit them in the trunk of your car, which in turn means that they are easily transportable. An added benefit to being able to take your bike anywhere is that your bike will be less likely to be stolen, which adds the benefit of added security. Because the idea of a folding bike was already fairly popular, we decided to take an alternate route when designing the bike that this presentation is all about, and that bike is a telescoping bike. Hello, my name is Kevin Perez, and today I will go over our idea and the design process. When we chose the telescope bike, we decided to improve the practicality of the bike. We wanted to improve on the aspects of transportation and storage. We decided on doing a bike because it is a convenient form of transportation and it is energy efficient. It is also a good way to exercise. The only problem is that a full bike can take up a lot of space. This was the problem that we were trying to solve. We took inspiration from a folding bike and made some initial sketches, as can be seen here on the left. We ended up deciding on creating a telescoping bike because this will make our project unique and we cannot find another telescoping bike online. And here's the initial sketch of our telescoping bike on the right. We used a file exchange in Learn to transfer files between us and we communicated through our weekly Zoom meetings and in a group chat. While we were designing the project, we did encounter some problems and one of the major ones was converting files from 2019 SOLIDWORKS into the 2020 versions. Our idea and why we chose this idea. Our inspiration to create the telescoping bike was from a folding bike and all of the benefits that it provides. We made changes to the initial design of the folding bike, but we wanted to keep the same benefits, but implement them in a new innovative way. We adapted the folding bike in our project to make it unique or removing the hinge and so that it saves more space. Both aspects can be seen in the telescoping bike and they were done by making the top bar of the bike collapsible into itself, as well as making the other parts of the bike easy to take apart. As mentioned before, one of our goals was to create a bike that would facilitate transfer and storage. One of the ways that this was going to be possible was by the telescoping, the telescoping aspect of the bike. And the other was uh, that this bike would be able to fit in the bag. This would be perfect for urban commuters and seater riders, as well as any other travelers that would like to take their bicycles with them. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ryan Bingham, and today I'm going to go over how our bicycle folds. 
So this is an image of our fully extended design here, of the bicycle frame. And now I'm gonna show you guys the steps you have to take to fold it. So the first step before we can even get started is going to be removing all the external parts. Now, the quick release axle is something that many bicycles already have as a standard part. So it's gonna be very common already. And basically what it is, is an axle that you can pull on this lever here to take off both the front and the back wheel. So that'll make that very easy. You can just take the front wheel and the back wheel and set them aside. And then we can move on to taking off the handlebar with a 5 16th hex key. It makes it super easy to just remove the handlebar and set that to the side. So now we could get on to the actual mechanism and we're going, it's going to rely on these locking pins, which is a clevis pin and a retaining ring. So the way this works is there's this pin that's going through the entire tube and it basically has this little ring that snaps onto the bottom here. So you can just simply remove this clip and then pull the pin out through the other end and to unlock the bicycle mechanism. So here's a little image. Basically, you'll be unlocking the pin down here and then pulling it out the top. And then for this pin, it's the exact same pin. And you just unclip it from the other side and pull it out this way. And now we're ready to fold. So basically, we're going to be rotating the front bar around. We're going to be rotating the back bar around. And then we can simply just compress this middle section like a telescope, basically, which is the point of our design. So after that, then we can stick the pins right back in into this new front slot for this one. And this one just goes back right into the same hole. And then you can lock the pins back in and it'll actually secure the bike in this locked position now. So it won't, you know, get messed up or fall apart. And then finally, here's what our final product looks like, all folded. As you can see, it's kept in a nice, tidy rectangle form, and it'll be very great for travel. And once we have all the wheels and stuff on the side, we can all put those into different compartments and whatnot. So that's it. I'm Isaiah Trujillo, and I will be talking about the top bar and its details. This picture on the left is the full assembly of the telescoping bike idea that we have made. And the picture on the right is just the same picture zoomed in on the part that we're focusing on. As you can see, this side connects to the handles and the front wheel steering. And then this side connects to the, the back part that connects to the back wheel. These arrows are the different motions that this part can do, as well as the different holes that there are pins in to make it have the telescoping effect. As you can see right here, this is the full assembly of the bike, but in exploded form. So it shows all the parts that are a part of the whole assembly. And we're gonna be focusing on this section right here. There are six parts to it. The main two parts are these two parts over here. This is the front one that connects to the steering and the handles. And the way that the steering works is two bearings, uh, part number 12, go on this top and underneath on the bottom and connect to the handles as well as this steering column and make it so you can move the tire. This bottom piece or this back piece will slide into here. As you can see, there's rails and there's the corresponding gaps that the rails um, go into, which make it so that is how the telescoping effect works. These holes right here are for where you can place the pin to make it collapse into the telescope, like the smallest form, and retract into the part when you ride the bike. So there's this hole, this um, back hole will correspond with this one when it's fully closed, and this one will be when it's open. Another pin will be right here in this hole, as you can see over here, to connect to the back part for when you want to um, turn this back, this back part that connects to the tire around to make it also into the smallest form. This is the clevis 
pin with the retaining ring that you will put into those holes when you collapse it and um, when you collapse it and make it into the bike. And this is the bearing for that is on the front, the front part that connects to the handles and the steering of the front tire to make it rotate. My name is Peter Hackle. I'm a member of Team 3, and we are designing a telescopic bicycle. I will be describing the handlebar subassembly. The handlebar subassembly consists of three design parts, the handlebar itself, then uh, the bottom clamp and the top clamp. The bottom clamp uh, has a hole here in the middle, uh, which uh, allows it to be attached to the steering column. The bottom clamp has a gap, uh, which can be closed by inserting a standard nut and a standard screw, uh, whose tightening will create an interference fit between the bottom clamp and the steering column. Then the handlebar itself is attached by placing the top clamp on top of it and using two additional uh, pairs of uh, uh, standard screws and uh, standard nuts can be affixed uh, to the bottom clamp. This uh, design allows the subassembly to be uh, disassembled easily and uh, which helps with uh, the storage of the bicycle as a whole. In addition, uh, the design allows the rider to choose between two basic position or orientations of the handlebar itself. Number one, in this first position, uh, which I call the road racing position, uh, the angle of the handlebar is such that the uh, horns are essentially parallel to the ground. This allows the rider uh, to place his or her body uh, more parallel to the ground as well, uh, which uh, facilitates uh, racing on a road. Alternatively, if uh, the rider uh, is interested in just cruising around uh, or more uh, leisurely uh, riding around the neighborhood, let's say, then uh, the two screws and nuts can be loosened before riding. The handlebar can be rotated approximately 150 degrees. The uh, top clamp is then reattached, creating once again an interference fit uh, between the handlebar and the two clamps. And then the rider can then sit back a little more upright, and uh, which allows for an easier uh, riding around. Thank you. This is Joel Fajardo with the back frame of our telescoping bike for Team 3. This back frame is made up of five different parts. Our main part, this uh, vertical tube here, which connects this back frame to the rest of the bike. These thick bottom bars, which support and connect the hole for pedals to our axle hole. These skinnier diagonal bars, which support the axle and finish connecting our parts into this triangular frame. Triangular frames are very common in many bicycles and they're very strong, so we use them here. This hole near the top is where a locking pin is used to attach the back frame to the rest of our bike. We have holes in our diagonal bars and our main vertical tube here, which are connected through two standard parts, those being the socket screw and the hex nut. This socket screw is meant to be tightened or untightened using our 516 hex key. At the bottom of this frame, we have a hole which exists through a pipe, a perpendicular pipe with an inner diameter, which is specifically meant to accommodate a pedal mechanism, which would be attached to this frame. The bottom bars are connected onto the bottom of this vertical tube onto this perpendicular pipe by having a diameter the same as this perpendicular pipe and resting on top of it. On the opposite side, we have small holes uh, aligned on our bottom and vertical, sorry, diagonal bars, which are connected and supported by the axle of a bicycle wheel. Lastly, uh, a very important part is the inner diameter of this vertical tube. It was made to accommodate a bicycle seat, so which would be attached later to this frame. Uh, the entire back of this telescoping bicycle uses very simple parts. It was designed to be very different than typical bicycles. Uh, it was meant to be easily taken apart 
and easily worked with. Thank you all for listening. All right, so going on the folding bike assembly, here we go. So basically the idea for the design of this project was that we wanted to be able to make a bike that was going to be customizable, but at the same time compact and practical. So the entire frame, as you can see from the rendering here, is very strange looking, but it comes in the form of practicality over visual uh, appeal. Um, everything, well, not everything, pretty much most of this assembly is a moving part of sorts in order to help it fold into a really small device. So these handlebars here, they both pivot and rotate backwards. This entire assembly right here and demonstrated here can slide back and forth into itself and get even smaller. This entire rear flange can fold up to 90 degrees, making it essentially just a straight line pull. And then it turns the whole bike basically into a rectangle. And our approximate dimensions for the rectangular fold of this bike was about 41 by 58 centimeters. So, you know, for a bike that's pretty small, in fact, that's very significantly small. And this whole idea of it just being this frame that's sold as is, is kind of for the idea of adaptability, which is where our practicality was coming into. So things like being able to change your tire type. So maybe you want to go on a bike ride in the mountains. Well, you can't just use, you know, street tires on a bike in the mountains because there's lots of thorns. There's cacti here in this, you know, in New Mexico. You need something that can handle that rocky terrain that has that type of grip for the off-roading. But maybe you want to go to the skate park. Well, it could double as a BMX tire too because then you could just swap them in and out depending on what you need. What the whole idea of these universal pins here are for. Brakes. Do you want front brakes? Do you not want front brakes? Do you have only front brakes? Do you just have back brakes because you stunt at the skate park and you just need to lock up the rear tire? Do you need heavy duty brakes because you're going to be riding in the mountains on the Sandia Trail and it's super steep and you don't want to die? And not to mention, you know, seats. I mean, granted, it's pretty adaptable for any type of seat that would slide into there like any typical bicycle but maybe you need a pointier seat because you need that support maybe you need a small seat because you're going to do endurance types of bike racing and so what happens is you end up losing that ability to be comfortable it's just the whole idea of the bike is basically to suit and exist to help whoever's supposed to be buying it <laughs> Um, for the most part, it's comprised of carbon steel, but there's a lot of aluminum components in it as well. And the entire bike just basically functions as a large piece of metal. So not only will it be durable because carbon steel and aluminum are rather strong metals, but aluminum is also, you know, good at wearing over time. Carbon steel is notoriously strong and has a decent Young's modulus. All of that is just basically for not only the practicality sake of having, you know, like metals because they're really excellent materials to build with, but also for cost, you know, aluminum is not particularly expensive anymore and carbon steel is really cheap and easy to produce in mass quantities. So the idea comes from, can the average person buy this? Maybe, but maybe they don't want it. Or maybe people who just want to be out there and different have something new want this bike. The whole idea is there's not really a target demographic because the demographic is supposed to be all-inclusive. And yeah. Hello, my name is Carlos Melara and I'll be talking to you guys about some of the challenges we experienced throughout the duration of our project. The first challenge was working on Zoom. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we were not able to meet in person to work on our project. This meant that we had to do everything over Zoom calls. This proved difficult since everyone had a different class and work schedule, which meant sometimes some people could not come to the Zoom meetings, which made it difficult to keep everyone on track and on the same page. We did this by sharing files on file exchange on UNM Learn, and we also had a group chat that we would, that we would talk to each other frequently to keep everyone on track and talk about what we did when someone didn't go to one of the Zoom calls. The second challenge was making sure that everything would fit onto the big bike assembly at the end of the project, since every part was being made by separate people. To do this, 
we had to make sure that everyone knew the dimensions and the unit, unit of measurements that we were using to make sure that everything would fit at the end. We did this by making sketches that showed the dimensions and sending it to everyone that was making the parts and also uploading it onto file exchange so everyone knew what we were doing. Third challenge was making the bike unique. When researching folding bikes, we came across a couple of folding bikes that were already on the market, but no, none of them were telescoping. So we decided to make a telescoping bike in order for it to be unique. And we also decided to make it into a, be able to fold into a small package in order to fit into a bag or a small suitcase that you could take anywhere, like on buses, trains, on walks to make it as an easily transportable bike and easily unfoldable in order to get on it and go and ride around on, at parks or wherever you would like to use it. And then fold it right back up, put it into the bag and you're on your way. This is a page of all the references we used from the quick releases, the locking pins and the bag ideas that we looked up. At the bottom has all the standard parts that we use from MakeMaster. Thank you for coming to our presentation.